The Lord be with you and also with you. <clears throat> Jesus said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. <clears throat> Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to forgive, receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. <coughs> Our first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, beginning at the 8th verse. The man and the woman heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and the wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The ser serpent pricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. And the psalm for this service is psalm number 130. <clears throat> Out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my suppl supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than the night watch for the morning, more than the night watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel 
from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our second reading is from St. Mark, chapter 3, beginning at the 20th verse. <clears throat> The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his apostles could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they, sa they sent to him and called him. The crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside, asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers. And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of my father is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> in the Collect for the First Sunday after Trinity. 
God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers and, because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you. Grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the colleagues for peace and for grace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I call it for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger and in all things guide us to know and do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we are always walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. known as the Trinity season, this being the first Sunday after the Trinity. The Trinity is the basis of the Christian faith worldwide. It means that the Godhead is comprised of Father, Son and Holy Spirit, who are mystically one person. It is difficult to explain how three persons can uh, constitute a single entity. However, today's Gospel tells us that any kingdom that is divided uh, against itself cannot stand. We see it in countries and we see it in families. Our world is full of divisions. And each one of us is full of divisions. Also, we are pulled towards good and evil at the same time. I don't know about you, but I always feel a great sense of sadness when someone who has worked hard, achieved a prominent position in life, and then suddenly it is all lost. Of course there is sadness when anyone falls from grace, but if someone is holding a, a, a position, particularly uh, in one of the institutions of the state, be that the judiciary, or police force, the government, the church, or a charity, that profession is sadly damaged. And because there is an expectation that these institutions are above reproach and can be trusted, we are diminished. Our faith uh, in, the, uh, in the church, 
or state is damaged. When something like this happens, I am always reminded of the hymn which says, The arm of flesh will fail you, you dare not trust your own. George Duffy's hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Why does it happen? How does it happen? It happens because each one of us is fighting an internal battle between good and evil. In other words, why wouldn't it happen? There is a war going on inside of each of us, a war between light and darkness, good and evil. Society is a living organism, always moving, always changing, and we are always on the move. Nothing stays the same. We can never relax and feel that I have got it made. That is always a very dangerous place to be. Human beings are a complex mix of emotions, always competing for a position for control of the victim. And the victim being ourselves. Even the saints experience this internal uh, division. And this is what St. Paul was talking about when he said, the good which I want to do, I do not do. The evil which I want to avoid, I find myself doing. We have to face this inner division and come to terms with it. Within each of us, there is a division, or there is division, fragility, darkness, evil, and fear. Now, what we need to do is engage in a process, a process of growth towards wholeness and unity. By God's grace, the divided self can be made whole. Those who are unified have great strength. Those who have peace within themselves radiate it to others. Those who don't, those who are possessed with conflict and anger, project onto others the conflict going on within themselves. Sin divides each of us in two. Part of us is pulling with God and part of us is pulling against God. Sin is not something we can throw off once and for all like an old garment. Rather, it is a condition in which we live. What is important is not so much our failures as our struggle for goodness. Once we are seriously struggling for goodness, we are facing in the right direction and we are on the side of Christ. Sin also divides us from one another because essentially sin is a refusal to love. It means that we always put our own needs before those of our neighbour. And by this disobedience, Adam and Eve not only brought about a rift between God and themselves, but also between themselves. Christ restores us to God's friendship, and by the power of his Spirit we are able to reach out to our neighbour in forgiveness and reconciliation. And so the, the divisions are overcome, and the kingdom of God is seen to have come among us. So let us not be disheartened or dismayed by the conflicts or the mistakes of others. It is actually to be expected. We are all human and we are all frail and fragile. But rather take heart that God took pity on Adam and Eve and promised to send them a saviour. The Gospel shows the promise fulfilled in Jesus. And Jesus overthrows Satan 
and establishes the kingdom of God for those who believe in him and who do God's will a new uh, kinship is formed and a new intimacy with God becomes possible. We are not just God's creatures but members of his family. A new bond is formed between us consequently the old divisions are overcome. Amen. Conscious of the, 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 the various conflicts that are taking place across our world, let us pray for those nations where there is division. Lord, you have warned us that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Hear us as we pray for the healing of divisions in the life of our nation. Help us to recognise that the things we have in common are of greater worth than those on which we differ. Deepen our understanding of one another's needs and our respect for one another's opinions and unite us in the common cause of justice, truth and freedom for the honour and glory of your name. Amen. O God, the King of Righteousness, we bring to you in prayer those who bear responsibility for maintaining law and order in our land, especially judges, magistrates and the police, that the innocent may be protected, evildoers be brought to account and the rights of all be defended and that we as a nation may, may enjoy the blessings of a just and free and peaceful society. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for the leaders of the nations. We remember before you, O God, those who exercise authority among us and influence public op opinion in church and state, in industry and commerce, all who speak to the nation through broadcasting and the press, and all who have power over the lives of others. Grant them the humility to seek your guidance and the courage to do your will, so that more people may be led to the knowledge of you and to the service of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we pray for the nations which are divided, we also remember families that are divided. Heavenly Father, whose will it is that your children should live in peace with you and in harmony with one another. Look with compassion on those families now suffering the pain of estrangement. Give to all a desire for reconciliation. Remove every hindrance of true love and understanding. And grant that they may find the joy of forgiving and being forgiven, even as they seek your own gracious pardon through the merits of Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. And let us in a 
brief moment of silence, bring before God our own particular concern, our anxiety, and those and also our thanksgivings for all that we have in life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you on your homes and with all whom you love, this day and forever evermore. Amen. Amen.